counting. Any day now, our country's population will reach that milestone. Growth on a nationwide scale is difficult to grasp. Better to start with a single town, which is why our cover story takes Thalia Ashuris to the town of Maricopa, Arizona. <laughs> It's late afternoon in Maricopa, Arizona. The picture-perfect time for the annual homecoming parade in this place that more and more people are calling home. That's Kelly Anderson, the only mayor this three-year-old city has ever had. Anderson has lived here all his life, now running the farm his grandfather first owned. When you're looking back there, none of that was there before. No. No. Six months ago, there wasn't a house there. <laughs> and when you were a kid? When I was a kid, How I rode, far back? Uh, there weren't any houses. Uh -huh. And I rode my bike through that area. We had a fishing pond on the north end of the farm, and uh, uh, life was good. It, it's good now. But life is changing fast. Maricopa's population has jumped from just 1,500 when Kelly Anderson took the helm to 25,000 today. <laughs> By the end of the decade, it's expected to explode to more than 100,000. Houses are going up everywhere. It's very fast. At one point, the city was uh, uh, permitting 800 permits a month. And when you do the creative math, that's about three people per hour. We're going to have gridlock from here to Kevin. Municipal Brand. planners are scrambling to keep ahead of potential transportation problems as they shape their city. Is this taken that into account or have we... Council member Will Dunn was born here and recently returned with his young family. We came here to get away from the growth. It came with us. So with new residents flocking to Maricopa... Do you really? I mean, so you started a pet store too? He decided to make the most of the boom. Sorry about that. His feed store now sells everything from rabbits to roses. You had to decide whether you're going to just... You're going to be mad that people's taken over your, your area. Or you're going to say, you know what, here's an opportunity. The opportunity to be a part of something historic as the number of Americans reaches a new benchmark. What's happening here in Maricopa is happening in much of the country in what is a population surge. There are one million new residents every four months. The Census Bureau predicts we'll reach 300 million people sometime the week of October 16th. We're the fastest growing nation in the industrialized world. Only China and India have more people. I have predicted that the 300 millionth American will be a boy born in Los Angeles County to a Mexican mother. William Fry is a demographer with the Brookings Institution. This is you know, not only a prediction, but I think it's, it's more symbolic of uh, what uh, the population of America will be looking like in the next several years. Fry says there are three reasons for our population growth. The birth rate is relatively high. We're healthier and living longer. But mostly, it's immigration. You are now citizens of the United States of America. A net increase of one immigrant, legal or illegal, every 30 seconds. The 300 millionth American represents going back to our melting pot roots in a way because we're now bringing in much of our growth from immigrants, the children of immigrants, and a diversity to our population which we haven't seen in a long time. Bonus. Of course, immigration is also touchy politically. Calls to seal America's borders. Marches in the streets. A lot of people will see that the 300 millionth American is going to be either an immigrant or a child of an immigrant, and we'll get that mixed up with all kinds of other issues associated with the illegal immigration debate. President Johnson comes to the Census Bureau, which tabulates such things. Back in 1967, the president was on hand to mark the 200 millionth American. And who is this august new arrival? Well, it's according to Life magazine, the Bible of popular culture at the time, he was Robert Ken Wu Jr., born November 20th at 11.03 a.m. in Atlanta. You know, I've always considered it uh, an, an honor and something that I've been proud of. Today, Bobby Wu is a lawyer and the father of three, still living in Atlanta. He says he can't even guess who will be number 300 million. 
it's impossible to come up with an average American. I mean, it's just such a diverse country with so many people. You can see how we got this big, starting here, Plymouth Rock. Wu's birth in 1967 prompted Charles Kuralt to look back at how fast America had grown. By 1775, when the embattled farmers stood here at the old North Bridge at Concord and fired the shot heard round the world, there were three million of us, mostly farmers. Think of it, three million people. One man for every square mile of what was to become, in the course of human events, a nation. It would take until 1915 to reach 100 million Americans. The streets filled with traffic, Ellis Island filled with immigrants, and a country reaching for the sky. On a Sunday afternoon. 52 years later, when we hit 200 million, America was grooving. Lovins were the rage. So was the barely there, aptly named Twiggy. Elvis Presley married Priscilla. It was a country growing up from the inside. Only 6% of us were foreign born. But alarm bells were sounding. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. In the TV series Lost in Space, the Robinsons looked for a new planet because of overcrowding on Earth. In 1972, a population commission chaired by John D. Rockefeller III said the problem was serious. Policy. The population growth of the current magnitude has aggravated many of the nation's problems and made their solution more difficult. Cautionary tones about population growth persist today. We have never had an America where we had so many people consuming so many natural resources with so much environmental impact. Vicki Markham of the Center for Environment and Population says Americans are making a deep, damaging ecological imprint on the environment. When you take all the Americans, our everyday actions do cause there to be an imprint, just like when you have an imprint of your foot on the beach. It is not without effect. Densely populated coastal regions, urban sprawl, more cars, they all cause climate changes and place increased demands on resources like energy and water. We are reaching ecological limits to some degree already in the country. There's evidence of it and those are, those are warning signals. Demographer William Fry has a more optimistic outlook. Population growth per se is not the cause for a lot of environmental degradation. We do consume a lot in this country and there may be able to, we may be able to put the brakes on that. Fry says even 400 million people, which he predicts will reach in 2043, is manageable. I think we're much better equipped in this country because of our wealth, because of our scientific prowess, and just because of all the land and resources we have here to enable that kind of growth. So it's not doom and gloom as far as you're concerned? No, I don't think it's a doom and gloom. Farmer Mayor Anderson of Maricopa is banking on that. You plant a seed, whether it's a cotton seed or a flower seed, you plant a seed of economic growth or prosperity, and it's another way to look at, uh, nobody to look at farming. And he's even sowing plans for future growth.